My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and in particular about a drug called midodrine in POTS. Now, POTS is characterized by orthostatic intolerance. This means that patients feel significantly worse when they adopt an upright posture compared to when they're lying down. To try and find effective treatments, it is vital that we try and understand the physiology of uh, what is happening in the body when normal healthy people adopt an upright posture or stand up. When we stand up, blood in all our blood vessels tends to get sucked down by gravity into our legs because of the effect, you know, and so when, when the blood gets sucked down into our legs, that means that there's less blood getting to our brain. Our brain, the back of the brain, is the furthest away and it's more difficult to get blood to the back of the brain. And ordinarily what would happen is we would all pass out and fall because there's a shortage of blood to the brain. However, in healthy, normal people, this does not happen because there are two reflex mechanisms that come into action as soon as we adopt an upright posture. And these mechanisms serve to maintain the blood flow to our brains. The first mechanism is regulated by stretch receptors in our blood vessels in the legs. Uh, and these uh, and what happens is this the, the the pulling down, the blood entering the vessels is sensed, and the leg muscles contract and the vessels constrict, and this prevents the blood from pooling into the legs. Secondly, our heart rate increases to try and maintain adequate blood flow to the brain. In some patients, the leg vessels don't constrict as well, and therefore they're not able to contribute to increasing the blood flow to the brain. And in those people, then the heart rate has to go up. The heart has to compensate by pushing the heart rate even higher. So the heart rate goes up even higher than it would normally, because the blood vessels are not doing their bit. As the heart rate goes up excessively, the heart unfortunately doesn't have enough time to fill with blood and because it's not getting enough time to fill with blood, it pumps out less blood than it should. So the heart is having to work harder, but it is working less efficiently. And that exacerbates the situation in POTS. If we can in some way reduce the stretching of the blood vessels, uh, especially in the lower limbs, when a person stands up, then in some way what this would mean is that there's more blood going to the brain, the heart has to compensate less, and therefore the heart rate may not go up excessively high. Uh, excessively high. And for a lot of patients with POTS, one of the biggest symptoms they feel is this dizziness and heart rate racing. And therefore, if we can do this, we can improve symptoms. Now, midodrine is a drug which works by increasing the tone of our blood vessels. And therefore, it reduces the likelihood of pooling of blood. It doesn't really affect the heart as such. But if there is more blood getting to the heart, then that means that every heartbeat is going to be more effective. And because it's more effective, um, there will be, it doesn't have to work as hard, so the heart rate will not go up as high. And this can have the overall effect of improving orthostatic tolerance. Interestingly, interestingly though, this can also have an unwanted effect on the bladder uh, because of the effect of the uh, agent midodrine on vascular tone, the bladder doesn't stretch as much. And therefore, uh, when people take midodrine, bladder emptying can be delayed because, again, the bladder doesn't stretch. Because it doesn't stretch, we don't know whether we need to pass urine. So the next question is, what is the evidence? You know, physiologically, it makes sense, but is there any evidence it works? And the answer is yes, but the studies are very small, and therefore it is not a foregone conclusion by any means. There was an interesting paper in the clinical autonomic research journal in 2000 uh, the lead author was vm gordon where what they found was that if you gave 21 patients with pots midodrine before tilting them uh, the heart did not go up as much so these people were having a tilt table test they were given this midodrine they then were put in an upright posture the heart rate did not go up as much 
there was another study of 53 children with POTS uh, and this was published in Circulation Japan in 2011. The lead author was Chen, Chen et al. And what they found was that compared to conventional therapy and even compare it to conventional therapy with combined with beta blockers, the combination of conventional therapy and midodrin seemed to work much better. So you, combining midodrin to conventional therapy seemed to be better than just conventional therapy and conventional therapy with beta blockers. It was associated with better symptom control and higher rates of cure. There was another study which was published in the Clinical Autonomic Research Journal the lead author was Holtke et al. I'll put all these on my website, who found that midodrine reduced the standing heart rate from 114 beats per minute to about 93 beats per minute, so almost 17 beats per minute uh, on average. There was another interesting study which was published in the Clinical Science Journal in 2014. The lead author was Amanda Ross. And this study suggested that it was patients who had neuropathic POTS. In neuropathic POTS, you have loss of the nerve endings in the, in the peripheries, and those nerve endings regulate the constriction. Those are the people, those people who can't constrict, who seem to do better than patients who had hyperadrenergic POTS, which is largely about too much adrenaline in the body. We would normally start midodrine at 2.5 milligram tablets, 2.5 milligram tablets taken three times a day. And the doses are then, depending on the patient's response, increased at weekly intervals. Most patients, if they are going to gain benefit, will do so at a total daily dose of less than 30 milligrams daily. So certainly I do use midodrine in my practice and for some people it does make a difference. The times that midodrine uh, is taken when you uh, write it up as a prescription, it's important that the times are uh, adhered to. Uh, we generally recommend that midodrine is not taken for at least four hours before bedtime. This is because there is a risk of the blood pressure going up excessively high when the patient is flat. Remember, you're constricting the blood vessels. You don't have the effect of gravity when you're lying down. So you're constricting the blood vessels. The blood pressure can go up. This is known as supine hypertension. Uh, the manufacturers of midodrine say that for a 10 milligram dose of midodrine, the blood pressure can increase by 15 to 30 millimeters of mercury. To try and avoid this, we recommend that dosing should avoid intake of the midodrine for at least four hours before the patient lies down or goes to bed. So typical times for dosing are about 6 o'clock in the morning, 12 p.m. and 5 p.m. if you're going to go to bed at 9 or 10 p.m. Um, another thing to say is midodrine, like any other medication, can have side effects. But again, it is important to stress that these side effects may not manifest in everyone. And even if they do happen, they may wear off. And even if they don't wear off, then discontinuing the medication will result in uh, resolution of the side effects. So a lot of people I know are very scared of trying new medications, but, you know, this is for quality of life purposes. I don't want to put anyone off, but I'll try and list the side effects that patients should look out for when they go on midodrine. The first uh, set of side effects are cardiovascular side effects high blood pressure, uh, main, most prevalent when you first start the medication or when the dose is increased. As I say, it constricts the blood vessels, it will increase the pressure more so when you're lying down. Uh, they may be associated with symptoms of chest pain, headaches, uh, blurred vision, and sometimes even palpitation. It's worth, however, noting that most of these symptoms may already be happening in patients just because of the POTS itself. It is worth saying that in my own practice, if the blood pressure exceeds, um, say, 180 over 100, or whether that is lying down or even standing up, then I try and avoid prescribing midodrine or I would discontinue it. So if someone came to me, they've been on midodrine, I find that the blood pressure is over 180 over 100, I would discontinue it. The second problem, as I've mentioned, is urinary retention. Obviously, the bladder is going to be, the tone is going to be increased. It's not going to stretch, etc. You can get neurological effects, altered sensation, restlessness, excitability, irritability, uh, skin effects, rash, itchy skin, especially over the scalp and sometimes flushing. 
And finally, you can get gut-related side effects such as nausea, vomiting, and indigestion. Unfortunately, a lot of POTS patients have all these symptoms anyway. Uh, so yes, it may detract you, but I don't think it should. It's worth trying it and seeing what happens. Whenever we take any medications, it's important to ensure that they don't interfere in a harmful way with other medications that we may be on. Uh, and midodrine can interact with some medications in a harmful way, and I'm going to try and um, list them uh, one by one. Uh, again, medications that can increase the uh, blood pressure. So anything, uh, if you're on something that can already increase the blood pressure, then taking midodrine could make it even worse. So the medications that do this are tricyclic antidepressants, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, thyroid hormones, steroids, and sympathomimetic drugs. Uh, there is a medication that we often use in POTS because it helps fluid retention called fludrocortisone. Uh, we can use midodrine and fludrocortisone together, um, but you know you want to watch very carefully as to what happens to the blood pressure, uh, and in particular pressure in the eyes. And therefore, it's important when patients are taking midodrine and fludrocortisone together. It's very important just to monitor them very carefully because the pressure can go excessively high, especially in the eyes. Then you have alpha blockers. Alpha blockers can antagonize the blood pressure raising effects of midodrine and therefore make it less effective, right? So you're, you know, you're taking this to try and improve the blood pressure when patients are standing up. If you take an alpha blocker, then that can blunt those effects. Beta blockers and digoxin, if taken with midodrine, can also cause the heart rate to slow down. And when we know that midodrine reduces the heart rate, uh, especially on standing up, then the combination can in some way reduce the heart rate even greater. I think there are also some comorbidities that patients may be suffering from in which I would not give the midodrine at all because the risk of harm may be greater than the benefits. Uh, these comorbidities include, uh, number one, uh, uncontrolled hypertension. So obviously, if you have high blood pressure at times and it's poorly controlled, then you don't want to give another medication that could increase the blood pressure. Previous stroke. Number three, organic heart disease, because again, if you're taking a medication that's gonna increase the pressure, it's gonna make the heart work harder. Uh, and if you have a diseased heart, then that could be bad. Uh, another condition is pheochromocytoma. This is a tumor which secretes hormones that can increase the blood pressure anyway. So again, you don't wanna give something that increases the blood pressure. Number five, if people are hyperthyroid, not thyroid, not thyroid which is controlled by hyperthyroid, Patients with kidney injury, kidney failure, uh, patients with urinary retention anyway and prostate disorders, uh, patients with glaucoma because of this uh, uh, increase in blood pressure, and patients with proliferative retinopathy where the blood vessels are damaged in the eyes because of high blood pressure. It's important that before patients start the medications, they have some blood tests, basic blood tests to look at their kidney function, their liver function, and it's a good idea that patients who are taking midodrine have these tests repeated every year. I think it's also uh, useful for patients who take midodrine to have a 24-hour blood pressure monitor to ensure that their blood pressure is not being pushed too high uh, by the midodrine. Um, what else? I think the 24-hour blood pressure monitor should be maybe done once a year or more frequently if the doses are constantly being pushed up. I think it's important to say that none of what I've said is exhaustive. Uh, so, you know, although I've told you a little bit about the common things, it's always a good idea before you try the midodrine, firstly, to be under a doctor who has experience in prescribing that uh, and be that they've checked you out to ensure that you're not on any other medications that could be interacting or you don't have any of these comorbidities in which midodrine could do you more harm than good. But otherwise, I think it's a very reasonable medication to try out. And for some people, it seems to do the job, mainly those people with that kind of neuropathic POTS, the POTS where they're not being able to, they're not able to constrict their blood vessels as well. And the midodrine will increase the tone and thereby make their POTS better. So um, I hope you found this useful. Once again, thank you for all that you do for me. And I will try and put the whole transcript of this on my website.